O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he's the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. <laughs> He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? It's he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. One is bewildered by the illusory representation. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of a water seen the fire, land seen water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in a transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in a transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra. Dharma Prajita Kaitavutra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parir Ishwaraha Kimba Parir Ishwaraha Sadhya Vridya Varudya Tetra Sadhya Vridya Varudya Tetra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhis Takshana Kriti Bihi Susu Subhis Takshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who, who are pure, fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. Such a truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other? Scripture. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam phalam. Nigama kalpatoro galitam phalam. Sukumukad amrita drabya samyutam. Sukumukad amrita drabya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho raska bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful men relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men relish Shimad Bhagavatam. Mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, including liberated souls, Shinvatam swak 
Svakata Krishna Shravantam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyantak Stohi Bhadrani Vidyantak Stohi Bhadrani Vidu Noti Suhit Satam Vidu Noti Suhit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita Is a self-righteous activity It's self-righteous activity And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as his best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the body who is constantly engaged in hearing. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. From the devotees. <coughs> he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chaitay tayar navidam. Chaitay tayar navidam. Stitam sattve prasidati. Stitam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes uh, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when all these impurities are wiped the away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante sacha karmani. Siddhyante Sarva Siddhyante Sarva Samsaya Siddhyante Sarva Samsaya Siddhyante Chasyakarmani Siddhyante Sachakarmani Drusta Evatmanishwari Drusta Evatmanishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus the Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of some Shashamagramam. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee and Krishna consciousness. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or his devotees and Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Text Number 9. Upavarnitam etadva. Upavarnitam etadva. Punyam parikshitam maya. Punyam parikshitam maya. Vasudeva kato petam. Vasudeva kato petam. Akyanam yad. Aprichata. Akyanam yada prichata. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. O oh, sages, as you did ask me, now I have described almost everything regarding the narrations about Lord Krishna in connection with the history of the pious Maharaj Pradikshit. Srimad Bhagavatam, purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srimad Bhagavatam is the history of the activities of the Lord. The activities of the Lord are performed in relation with the devotees of the Lord. <coughs> Therefore, the history of the devotees is not different from the history of the Lord of Lord Krishna's activities. A devotee of the Lord regards both the activities of the Lord and those of his pure devotees on an equal level, for they are all transcendental. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, we'll go on to the next verse also. No. 
Yaya Kata Bhagavata Yaya Kata Bhagavata Katani Yoru Karmana Katani Yoru Karmana Guna Karma Shraya Pumbi Guna Karma Shraya Pumbi Sam Savyasta Bubu Shubi Sam Savyasta Bubu Shubi Translation, those who are desirous of achieving complete perfection in life must submissively hear all topics that are connected with the transcendental activities and qualities of the personality of Godhead who acts wonderfully. <clears throat> Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The systematic hearing of the transcendental activities, qualities, and names of Lord Sri Krishna pushes one towards eternal life. Systematic hearing means knowing him gradually in truth and fact. And this knowing him in truth and fact means attaining eternal life as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Such transcendental glorified activities of the Lord of Lord Sri Krishna are the prescribed remedy for counteracting the process of birth, death, old age, and disease which are considered to be material awards for the conditioned living being. The culmination of such a perfectional stage of life is the goal of human life and attainment of transcendental bliss. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here Prabhupada is emphasizing what's called systematic hearing of the transcendental activities, qualities, and names of Lord Sri Krishna. And this pushes one, or this uh, inspires a person towards eternal life. Now, why does he say that? Because most people nowadays believe that when they die, everything is over. There's nothing after that. Some people believe in eternal life or some kind of eternal life or eternal damnation after death. But many people today, due to modern education, believe that when you die, that's it. It's all over. You're just a bunch of chemicals, and uh, the chemicals just uh, uh, dissipate, and uh, that's it. It's all over. There's nothing after that. So... It's only by the systematic hearing that uh, uh, of Krishna's transcendental activities and his devotees' transcendental activities that we begin to believe that there is an afterlife after, after death. So, hearing about Krishna and hearing about his devotees without Hearing about his devotees, one's uh, understanding of Krishna will be incomplete because the devotees are exemplary in their behavior of approaching Krishna. That's why we have to hear about them. We're, in a sense, closer to the devotees than to Krishna because Krishna is the supreme absolute truth. He's perfect in every way. We are in, in, imperfect in every way. So when you hear about people who uh, are s somewhat like us and how they attain perfection, that's inspiring f to us that, okay, I can do it also. If they did it, I can also do it. Uh, but if you just hear about Krishna, then it's just, uh, it's like, it's so far away from us that it would seem impossible. But the devotees show that it is possible to develop an intimate, eternal relationship with Krishna. So there is something after death. There's a lot more after death than during life if we uh, hear regularly. So there's systematic hearing. And then systematic hearing, Prabhupada re repeats it again, it means knowing him, meaning Krishna, gradually in truth and fact. And this knowing him in truth, in fact, means attaining eternal life. So 
There's a certain question here, Param Jistva Nivartate. One is seeking a higher taste. How do you get that higher taste? You get it by hearing the systematic hearing. That's how you get the higher taste. And it has to be systematic, meaning every day in a regular fashion and without uh, noise and, and responsibilities that divert our attention from the hearing. We have to learn this reverent hearing and chanting. Reverent, that means spiritually surcharged hearing and chanting. And, and that is what keeps us on the straight and narrow path back to Godhead. So he says, systematic hearing means knowing him gradually in truth and fact. And this knowing him in truth and fact means attaining eternal life. So this, uh, this point right there connects us to where we left off yesterday. And that is, we're back in the fifth chapter and we stopped on verse 14. So it says, the embodied soul, master of the city of the body, does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of action. All this is enacted by the modes of material nature. Now, this is almost impossible for someone to understand. They're saying, what? You mean, this is saying I'm doing nothing? But I'm doing everything. What do you mean I'm doing nothing? I'm waking up every day and passing stool and urine. That, that's the proof that I'm doing everything. No, it's not. Because that's not you that's doing that. Your spiritual body, which is covered by the material body, does not pass stool and urine. It does not go to sleep. It does not have to wake up. It does not eat. It does not defend. It does not do any of this eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. All these things are forced on us by the body, which is under the control of material nature, meaning the three modes of material nature. The soul doesn't have to do any of those things. The soul's eternally liberated, but by becoming bewildered, just like, let's say uh, you are bewildered. Let's say you take a large dose of LSD. Now you're bewildered. And in your bewilderment, you live on, let's say you live in Hyderabad in a high rise up on a you know, 33rd floor. <laughs> and you're out in your balcony tripping on LSD, and all of a sudden you say, I'm a bird, I'm a bird, I'm a bird. And you jump off the balcony and start going like this as if you're gonna fly through the air. And what happens, you die, right? But that's because someone was completely bewildered. So that's our state in this complete bewilderment. Due to attachment to sense gratification, we think we are the doer, but in fact, we're not the doer. We're being controlled. Uh, just like if you want to control a big bull. Big bulls are dangerous. They, they weigh up to 2,000 pounds. They can kill you easily. Right? All you have to do is put a metal hook in their nose. And now you can control them. Just by that little hook. Or how does someone control an elephant? They have a little stick that's no longer than this and they can control the elephant. You know, say, have, have you ever seen the elephant uh, keeper? He has a little stick like this, and he goes like this or that, and the elephant <laughs> follows what he says, uh, unless the elephant is really mad. But uh, normally, they keep them under control. So we see that we're being completely controlled by three things, goodness, passion, and ignorance. But it's mostly uh, passion and ignorance. Uh, and all three are conditioning, but passion and ignorance uh, are profound conditioning. So Prabhupada writes, 
The living entity, as will be explained in the seventh chapter, is one of the energies or natures of the Supreme Lord, but is distinct from matter, which is another nature called inferior of the Lord. Somehow the superior nature, the living entity, has been in contact with material nature since time immemorial. The temporary body or material dwelling place which he obtains is the cause of varieties of activities and their resultant reactions. So we're living in a temporary place called the body. That's our home for the time being. But the fact that we identify with the body means whatever happens to the body affects us. Us meaning uh, the false ego. Uh, there's the real ego and the false ego. So while we're in the body, and if we identify with the body, oh, this is American, this is Indian, this is this, this is that, we become affected by it, although we have nothing to do with the body. Our soul is independent. It's eternal. It's full of bliss. But by associating with something, just like if you associate with LSD, you could very well jump off the 33rd floor of the building. Or if you associate with people who have misconceptions, you can end up in a foxhole in a, in a battlefield with bombs going off and machine guns shooting. And one of, one of those bullets that's coming out hits you and, and you, you could be maimed for life or dead. So you see, in different ways, according to who and what we associate with, we become conditioned by the three modes. And these three modes put us in a state of bewilderment. And in that state of bewilderment, we can engage wholeheartedly in self, uh, uh, self-destructive behavior. We see it all the time. We see a mother killing her children. We see a, a husband poisoning his wife. We see uh, uh, people killing each other, people uh, uh, eating things that would make them sick, and so forth. Taking intoxication, engaging in all kinds of illicit activities, because they're in a state of bewilderment, and they're being controlled by the modes of material nature. Not, they're not in control. They think they're in control, but they're not in control. So the temporary body or material dwelling place, which one obtains is, cause, is the cause of varieties of activities and their resultant reactions, meaning the cause of karma. We have to act and there's a reaction to every action we perform. It can be either good or bad, but both reactions keep us con, uh, controlled and conditioned to the cycle of birth and death. Living in such a conditional atmosphere one suffers the results of the activities of the body by identifying himself in ignorance with the body. There it is, right there. That's the main statement. It is ignorance acquired from time immemorial that is the cause of bodily suffering and distress. So this is a, is a reference to uh, the cycle of suffering. The cycle of suffering begins subtly and it happened, it's been happening over and over again in all the different births and deaths that we have undertaken, we have suffered, we have taken. So when you die, something remains from the previous life. It's called kutam. Kutam means the tendency or the inclination for sense gratification. It remains. And we see this in life also. Like, let's say a Catholic person goes to confession and they go into a little stall you know, and on one side is the priest, but you can't, they, you can't actually see the priest. It's, it's some kind of separation, but you can hear the priest. And then you're on one side, he's on the other side. And you say, Father, I have sinned. And he says, my dear son or daughter, uh, please uh, pay witness to your sins. And the person said, well, last week uh, I was uh, shooting up cocaine. 
Oh, you must say 100 Hail Marys. Wait a minute, Father, it's not enough. It's not all. And after doing that, I did this and I did that because I was crazy. Oh, then we have to increase it to 1,000 Hail Marys. No, but wait a minute, <laughs> I didn't finish yet. And I did this and that. So, oh, okay, 10,000 Hail Marys. Thank you, Father. So the person walks out singing, Hail Mary's uh, Mother of God, blah, 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 10,000 times. And then they go on sinning again. And then they go back in a month and they say, Father, I have sinned. Oh, really? Uh, uh, play witness to your sins. Oh, I did this and I did that. Okay, you, 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 it's not that bad. You only say 100 Hail Marys. Oh, but wait a minute, Father, I didn't finish. Then I did this and that. Okay, it's 1,000. No, wait a minute, I didn't finish yet. And then I did this and that. Okay, it's 10,000. Father, this more. Okay, go ahead. Okay, 50,000 Hail Marys. And he goes back, says 50,000 Hail Marys, and he sins again. So that's called prayaschitta, simply performing rituals for reducing the effect of sin does not eliminate the desire to sin. It just temporarily eliminates the effects of sin, whether it's in Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, etc. They all do the same thing in one way or another. So that's what the kutam is. The, the inclination to sin is not destroyed, is not uh, stopped. You can only stop it through systematic hearing of Bhagavatam. Then your desire to sin, you know, systematic hearing and chanting, then it will gradually diminish because of the repetition. Just like if you tell your kid, okay, you did not, uh, uh, put your clothes in the clothes bin, dirty clothes bin. Therefore, you can't use your cell phone for as many times as, as, as there were pieces of cloth on the ground, uh, clothing on the ground, in your, uh, on the floor in your, in your room. So there were eight pieces of, of dirty clothes on the floor. Okay, so eight days you can't use your cell phone. What? Oh, no. Yes. Okay. So... And then uh, after eight days, again, the clothes are on the ground. This time it was five, time, five pieces of clothes. Okay, so five days you can't use your cell phone. So like that, progressively, one may understand through repetition. Okay, just like cows. We can train cows and dogs also. You can train dogs and goats also. You can train the goats. The different ways of training them. We, we do it all the time. And you can train human beings, but it's through repetition. And if you stop repeating, they eventually go back to doing what they did before. See, just like a child, to potty train a child, it's through repetition. Every time they, they don't go, go poop in the potty, you give them some little uh, stern uh, discipline. And eventually, the little kid stops pooping all over the place and only poops in the toilet. Repetition. So, uh, but some people refuse to be trained. And there's a lot of people now. Before it was very few. Now it's a lot. They just refuse. They're adamant. Say. And, and, and what kind of training do they refuse? They refuse to give up sense gratification. They're adamant. Even though it causes suffering, they don't care. They don't care. And there's so many examples of it. So here Prabhupada says, living in such a conditioned atmosphere. We're living in a conditioned atmosphere. As soon as you go out the door of the temple, you're in a conditioned atmosphere. Everyone's being conditioned to uh, believe there's nothing after death, believe that everything started by an accidental explosion, believe that uh, the real goal of life is sense gratification, and the more money you have, the more sense gratification you'll have, and 
that's that's the that's the culture that's the conditioning right so as soon as so it says it is ignorance acquired from time immemorial that is the cause of bodily suffering and distress. As soon as the living entity becomes aloof from the activities of the body, he becomes free from the reactions as well. That's a big statement. How do you become aloof from the activities of the body? That's, that's going to be explained now. As long as he is in the city of the body, he appears to be the master of it, but actually he is neither its proprietor nor controller of its actions and reactions. He is simply in the midst of the material ocean, struggling for existence. So, this is a big point. It explains the cause of suffering. Ignorance is the cause of suffering. And there are many, many verses that explain this. So, we're going to read a few of those in order to get a better understanding. So, if we look at the fourth chapter, 19th verse, Krishna says to Arjuna, Yasya sarve samaramba kama sankalpa varjita jena agni karmanam tamahu pandita udhe. One is understood to be in full knowledge whose every endeavor is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker for whom the reactions of work have been burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. So that's what's happening when you engage in uh, what's called systematic hearing. The fire of perfect knowledge burns up that Papa, that desire to sin, that desire for sense gratification, that desire to avoid following Krishna's uh, instructions. And Prabhupada says, only a person in full consciousness, of full knowledge, can understand the activities of a person in Krishna consciousness. Because the person in Krishna consciousness is devoid of all kinds of sense gratificatory propensities. It is to be understood that he has burned up the reactions of his work by perfect knowledge. How do you get perfect knowledge? Repetition, 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 repetition. Systemic or systematic hearing. That's the way you, you get knowledge. Development of this knowledge of eternal servitude, oh, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Because a person in Krishna consciousness is devoid of all kinds of sense gratificatory propensities, it is to be understood that he has burned up the reactions of his work by perfect knowledge of his constitutional position as the eternal, eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's, that's who we are. This is our constitutional position. This is our real identity. This is really who we are. We have an eternal relationship with Krishna we're always subordinate to Krishna, and we should always, therefore, serve Krishna without any mundane uh, or gross or subtle or gross material uh, purpose, simply to please the Lord. Development of this knowledge of eternal servitorship to the Lord is compared to fire. Such a fire, once kindled, can burn up all kinds of reactions to work. In other words, it can burn up Purify all karmic reactions. So this is a very important verse. And it's uh, in order to give us the opportunity to become immune to karma. Immune to karma. Now, what happens if we're recalcitrant? That means we persistently refuse to follow Krishna's instructions, refuse to, to be engaged in systematic hearing and chanting, refuse to, uh, let's say, follow the, ru the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness that we promise to do at initiation. Or if one is not initiated, they don't take seriously following the rules and regulations 
especially chanting Hare Krishna, by which they can get initiated. Right? So what happens? We come under the control of Krishna's material energy. So, where is that explained? First Canto, seventh chapter, and fifth verse. Yeah, so this, this verse is very important. Yeah, yeah, Samuito. Oh, let's see, where is that? Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, 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 somebody told Jiva, it's first canto, seventh chapter, verse five. Okay, so it says here, it is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that the actual knowledge of the conditioned soul is now covered by ignorance or nescience. Thus, the theory that a living being's absolute impersonal Brahman is refuted herein. This cannot be because the living entity has his own way of thinking in his original unconditional state also. Just like you have your own way of thinking now, before we fell down into the material world of illusion, we had our own way of thinking. That's why we fell down. We, the possibility was there to, to not think properly, and then we fell down. So there's no such thing as we all come from the Brahma Jyoti or the, uh, the uh, impersonal light. The present conditional state is due to the influence of the external energy, which means that the illusory energy takes the initiative while the Supreme Lord is aloof. In other words, if we play with fire, we get burned by the fire. If we're attracted to material energy <coughs> and material nature, we get it conditioned by it. We get caught, just like the moth. At night, the moth is attracted by the campfire. And you see these moths flying around the campfire. And eventually, they fly a little too close. Their wings get singed by the fire, and they fall into the fire and die. See? That's why, and, and even a light, you know, in the summertime when it's really hot, you see all these flies and moths and things flying around a, a light bulb, right? And then in the morning, you see there's a whole bunch of them that are dead underneath the light bulb or in the, in the uh, enclosure of the light bulb. You know? Why? Because they were attracted by the light and the heat. And eventually they got too close and, they, and their wings were, their very thin, fine wings were uh, damaged and they died. See. In the same way, if we flirt around with Maya, thinking, oh, I'm not going to get caught by Maya, what happens? We get caught. If you play with fire, you'll get burned. So the Lord does not desire the living being be illusioned by the external energy. The external energy is aware of this fact, but still she accepts a thankless task of keeping the forgotten soul under illusion by her bewildering influence. The Lord does not interfere with the task of the illusory energy because such performances of the illusory energy are also necessary for a reformation of the conditioned soul. An affectionate father does not like his children to be chastised by another agent, yet he puts his disobedient children under the custody of a severe man just to bring them to order. But the all-affectionate Almighty Father at the same time desires relief for the conditioned soul, relief from the clutches of the illusory energy. The king puts the disobedient citizens within the walls of the jail, but sometimes the king, desiring the prisoner's relief, personally goes there and pleads for reformation, and on his doing so, 
the prisoners are set free. Similarly, the Supreme Lord descends from his kingdom upon the kingdom of illusory energy and personally gives relief in the form of the Bhagavad Gita, wherein he personally suggests that although the waves of illusory energy are very stiff to overcome, one who surrenders unto the lotus feet of the Lord is set free by the order of the Lord. This surrendering process is the remedial measure for getting relief from the bewildering ways of the illusory energy. The surrendering process is completed by the influence of association. The Lord has suggested, therefore, that by the influence of the speeches of saintly persons who have actually realized the supreme, men are engaged in his transcendental loving service. The conditioned soul gets a taste for hearing about the Lord, and by such hearing only, he is gradually elevated to the platform of respect, devotion, and attachment for the Lord. The whole thing is completed by the surrendering process. Herein also the same suggestion is made by the Lord in his incarnation of Vyasadeva. This means that the conditioned souls are being reclaimed by the Lord both ways, namely by the process of punishment, by the external energy of the Lord, and by himself as the spiritual master within and without, within the heart of every living being, the Lord himself as the super soul, Paramatma, becomes the spiritual master, and from without, he becomes the spiritual master in the shape of scriptures, saints, and the initiator spiritual master. This is still more explicitly explained in the next sloka. So this is an extremely profound statement. How do we get out of this conditioning? It's by getting a taste for hearing about the Lord. And by such hearing only is one gradually elevated to the platform of respect, devotion, and attachment for the Lord. So, we can tell who is interested in making spiritual advancement and who's not interested. The people that walk out of the class are not interested. They have more important things to do. Whereas the most important thing to do is what? To hear. Systematic yeah. hearing. That's the most important thing. So out of this congregation, how many people are sitting here right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have over a hundred initiated devotees. Where are they? You see? If there are problems, this is the cause of the problem. No systematic hearing going on. They have more important things to do, like sleep, eat, mate, go to work come back from work, eat, sleep, mate, etc. That's more important than the systematic hearing. So this is the problem that people have. And unless they fix the problem by systematic hearing, it's not going to go away. Whether it's health, whether it's family problems, whether it's mental problems, whether it's this or that financial problems, work problems, they're not going to go away unless one gets use, gets a taste for systematic hearing. Okay, so I don't want to beat the, uh, the uh, point too much more. So are there any questions? We'll continue. We still haven't finished these verses uh, 5, uh, 7 to 517. We're on We'll be on verse 15 tomorrow. See how important these verses are in the fifth chapter. And it connected <coughs> to many other verses in Bhagavad Gita. Any questions? I just, a little comment, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah it is said actually, uh, the, the, the proof that someone is making spiritual advancement is to come to the point of in Sanskrit, called snare. I mean, the, means snare attraction for hearing, and uh, of course, coming to temple for darshan, he, hearing mostly, basically, because hearing is uh, the sign that 
you know, someone has got a developed taste, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's making spiritual advancement, actually. Yes. That's it. That's the yes. Absolutely. It is clearly mentioned. You know. I've naked devotions in many places. Prabhupada rem talks about it all the time. Mm. But many purports, just like the one we just read. Many, many times. And also in the, in the nine, nine item devotional service, it so begins from hearing. Hare Krishna, good morning. Yes, Hare Krishna. I have a question. Uh, I think in the previous class you said that the soul does nothing. So then I where have said it this time also. Yeah. <laughs> so where is the desire coming from? Is that from the soul or is it from our mind? <coughs> no. The, the soul is conscious. The soul has its own thinking, feeling, and willing. Okay. okay. And it has limited free will. That means that the soul can fall from any position. You can be on the edge of Vaikuntha, you can be in the middle of Vaikuntha, you can be in Goloka. It's possible for the soul to fi fall down from any position. Okay. Now we're already fallen, but we can keep falling mm. over and over again by not being attracted to this systematic hearing. So in the spiritual world, they're systematically hearing and chanting all the time, right? They don't have to work, they don't have to eat, they don't have to go to sleep, they don't have to wake up. They, don't, you know, if, uh, they can do those things if they want to, but they don't have to. Here we have to do those things, mm -hmm. and therefore we have to develop this taste again for systematic hearing, because in the spiritual world, they're always hearing Krishna, they're always seeing Krishna, they're always associating with Krishna. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, we're not. Mm -hmm. So we have to develop that taste. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and, the, and the fundamental way to associate with Krishna is through the systematic hearing and then chanting and doing service. So there was one thing I didn't discuss today, but I, I think I should discuss it in answer to your question. And that is, in the fifth chapter, uh, fifth chapter. One second. Mm. One second. Fifth chapter, sixteenth verse. There's a summary, and that summary uh, is a progression. And what Prabhupada says. Full knowledge of Krishna, which he explains in 5th chapter, 16th verse, which we haven't read yet, we'll get to it tomorrow. Full knowledge of Krishna leads to cleansing of all misgivings or doubts. Two, we lose the desire for sense gratification. Three, our previous karma is erased. Four, we proceed straight on the path of liberation. Five, we understand what is, what is our real constitutional position as the eternal servant of Krishna, and we never budge from that after that. These are five concomitant things of having full knowledge of Krishna. But how do you get full knowledge of Krishna? Systematic hearing. So we'll discuss this more tomorrow. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. No, Maharaj, can you uh, uh, elaborate a little bit what, what does it mean, systematic hearing? Being regulated. Coming every morning <laughs> to Mangalarti and not walking out when the class starts. <laughs> 
And you have to adjust your you have to adjust your schedule to do that. At least once a day. It's a mega time. At least it can be the morning. It can be You see, Krishna gave you the opportunity. Is there any excuse? Is there any excuse? You tell me. Does anyone have an excuse? No. no. But still they're not doing it. You see? That means they don't want to do it. See? Everybody has thinking, feeling, and willing. So their thinking, feeling, and willing is more important things than sitting another half an hour or 45 mm -hmm. minutes and hearing the class. It's more important things. And then the prayers we sing before the class, Shrambatam Swagata Krishna. Yeah. All those prayers, you know. Yeah. They, they tell us exactly how to only by hearing. How to realize Krishna, how to yeah. to get purified. Yeah. It's now I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying this is the fact. We should know what the facts are. Then people can adjust themselves or not adjust themselves. But if they think, oh, it's normal not to take part in the Whole part, of the whole program in the morning. I can, I can skip all these other things. But I already know everything. No, you don't know everything. We don't. No, I don't know everything either. But I'm learning. You learn two ways. You learn by hearing, and you learn by speaking, or or preaching. See, if you want to really learn a subject, you should become a preacher. And whenever you get stuck on a point. You'll learn that this thing I didn't understand, but now because of the questions and, and interaction, and now I, un I understand it also. You're learning in both ways, the pe person that's speaking and the person that's also hearing. Magata Mapla, it was that verse. Magata, we are. Machita. Magata Pranam, Buddha Yanta. Buddha Yanta, Sparasparam, Katyanti, Shamanam, Nitya. Kichanti, Pramanticha. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, so a uh, tenth chapter, uh, uh, ninth verse. Yeah, much. Uh, yeah. yeah, anyway, the tenth chapter, ninth verse says that by uh, when two devotees meet each other, they derive great pleasure speaking and hearing about Krishna. And this would enlighten. And they get enlivened, yes. Machita, machita, pranak, bodhiantas, paras, pranam, katyanti. Right. So that's tenth chapter, tenth verse. No, ninth verse, sorry. Tenth chapter, ninth verse. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, their lives are fully devoted to my service, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. Mm. That's what the class should mm. be. This is a definition of what the class should be. It's not just one person speaking all the time. It should lead to discussion. Interaction. You know, and, and churning the pot of nectar. Every day we're churning a little bit more, and every day we're getting a little bit more inspiration. This tushyanticha ramanticha means uh, enliven, enlightening one another and conversing about by by conversing about Krishna. Yeah. Enlightening is very significant, you know. Enlightening each other. Yes, enlightening each other. Otherwise, we don't have taste to continue. You know? Yes, get stuck. Stuck in eating, sleeping, <laughs> mating, and defending, <laughs> instead of becoming liberated from it. Right. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah.